time. Hello. <laughs> okay, Andre. So let's have a chat. Um, Biden. Let's just let's just jump in. I mean, let's just jump in. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, Biden. Yeah, he's in a he's in a flurry of uh, high tension. So, and by the way, you you yourself know this planet Saturn. <laughs> I mean, as clear as could be, you know, when you run into it. And this is the thing that planet like Saturn, the way it is most troubling is when it affects your health, which in his case, it's not exactly health, but it's related to health because it's the sense that, uh, for instance, age is also Saturn, the idea of time. You know? So the older you are, the more your Saturn affects you. Uh, in this kind of way, you know, where, where if someone says to you, you're too old, that's Saturn, right? But if you're sick, really sick, that can also be Saturn, right? So uh, that's why he's having such a hard time. So in the astrology, what happens there is that each week this month, as we go toward August, Saturn is pulling away from that really difficult spot, so it'll improve. But that doesn't tell you necessarily, does he stay, does he go? He seems to be digging in his heels saying, I'm going to continue. And, uh, you know, then the people that are worried, really worried about this are saying, yeah, but the numbers don't look great at the moment. And then you get the counterpoint to that. People who say, oh, I don't believe in any polls. It's all, pff, you know, forget about that. So, but the atmosphere is tense right at the moment without question it's really really tense you know? yeah it, it, well so what what exactly i mean where is saturn hitting him it the uh saturn so he has a mid-heaven line it, like you think of the high point and the low point it's a timing point there right and it it's quite sensitive and saturn is right there at the bottom of the chart you know landed on it and this thing developed right as Saturn was stationing, right? And that's the risk. When Saturn is stationing, the energy amps up. And if it catches you the wrong way, it can really put you on the spot, you know? Um, so. Well, you know, it's funny because, um, you know, people always want, oh, astrology is not real. You can literally look at the time, like you're saying, Saturn stationed and bam, it just hit. I mean, it's, it's insane to me that people can look at it and go, it's not real. It's not real. Oh my God. Like where, where, oh no, no, for sure. For <laughs> sure. I mean, you know, the only, the counterpoint in the way that I had explained it is that this should also be hard on Trump in that the, it's not on his same line, but it is in the region of squaring his son. So my feeling about this is that with Trump, the problems are going to show up sooner or later. And, and by later, I don't mean next year. I mean, like within this cycle, they're going to show up because he's doing what he always does. He cries victory way too soon. And then something else comes up and he's forced to realize, oh, it wasn't what I thought it was. But at the moment, he thinks he's telling people he's going to win in a landslide oh, sure. because that's what it appears to sort of. I mean, who knows if people voted, what would happen? But right now, the alarm with the Democratic party, the senators, the house people, as they're saying, hey, if you don't leave, we're going to lose everything here because all the numbers, right. you know, are going right. the wrong way, you know. Right, so, right, right, right. And yeah. well, and you know, I, um, I guess George Clooney came out yesterday mm -hmm. and was like, but yeah. has George, shut up. I mean, just I, I, come on, Clooney, just be quiet. Um, I don't think Biden's going to go anywhere. I don't. I, I, he's pretty easy to read. He's also a stubborn Scorpio, just like me. Um, and right. <laughs> fixed energy, hang on, hang tight. Yeah. yeah, fixed energy. But I, I, he, when I read him, I've got cards and I'll go into him. But when I read him, he's saying to me, he's like, it will be a disaster. Like he knows it will be a disaster if I, if I drop out right now, it will be an absolute disaster. And Kamala Harris knows it too. She's pretty easy for me to read as well. I don't know what sign she is. What is she, a Capricorn? What is she? Libra. Libra. Yeah. Libra with, Libra with moon and Aries. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Like a full moon, a very, very precisely tight full moon that's personality. Yeah, which you, you see a lot in 
in fact, in politics right now, Trump, Biden, and Kamala are all full moon at different levels of precision, but they all have the sun moon on the opposite sides. And you see this a lot in people that are high achieving, creative. Now, of course, full moon can show up in the case of people that are crazy too, because you know, the whole thing of being a lunatic, that's the moon running amok. Yes. But by and large, the full moon is better than the new moon. It's a more, you know, uh, fruition type thing. That's why in the, in the Vedic system, in India, they'll do celebrations and festivals and things like that. They pick the full moon. They don't do that on the new moon, even though people say, well, the new moon is when you start things. Yeah, but the new moon doesn't feel as good. It feels, you know, in fact, in Tibet, they think the new moon is demonic. Literally, they call it that. <laughs> so well, that's very interesting. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm the new moon. I'm pretty sure I'm the new moon, baby, because I'm like in the like I'm like one degree in Gemini. I have Gemini moon. It's like one degree. Gemini moon. Okay, but that would be, no, your son's in Scorpio though, so that, was that, is that, your, you remember your moon to be in Gemini for sure? Or oh yeah, for sure. It's seriously at like one, one degree, I think, maybe. Right, two. well then that, okay, so you are, yours is not full, but almost full because the moon was full in Taurus. Okay. So then it goes to the next sign. So you have a bright moon without being full, which in a lot of ways is the best of both worlds because if you have the moon, nice and bright, it's bright, and you're not getting the tremendous intensity of the full moon, which can sometimes cause problems, right? So it's pretty good, yeah, having it like that. But it's not It's not new, though. New would be if it was in uh, Sagittarius or like maybe in uh, Libra. Scorpio itself would be the actual full moon. The other thing about Kamala that's very interesting is that her Libra sun is precisely, uh, first of all, it trines her own Saturn, it makes a trine, which is a really nice aspect. But the Saturn is where the U.S. moon is. So her sun trines the U.S. moon. This means that even though people are always saying, oh, Kamala, she's not, people don't like her. This is BS. Kamala just hasn't emerged into the public light in a big way yet. But she has a really good connection to the U.S. energy and would do really well, which is why I've never worried. When I see this situation, to me, doesn't matter who runs Biden or, or her, it's where it, where it gets really complicated is if they said, well, both of them have to leave. That would be really unusual too, because generally that, that's not what they would do. So I haven't been too worried to me, but Joe or Kamala, both, because the thing is, the final thought for me is that this is where it gets strangely ironic. If Biden is alive on November 4th to run against Trump, he'll beat him because it's oh, Charles yeah. Biden. The start yeah. is better. So, I agree. you know, even though at, in current moment, in the current moment, yeah, George Clooney and all kinds of people are panicking and thinking, you know, this is, this is all going downhill really fast, right? Yeah, I agree. I, I, um, I actually disagree about Kamala. I never got the best energy from her. I mean, I'm, I was never a fan. She was senator in California, and I wasn't a fan then. I'm not really a fan now. Mm. Uh, but, um. I never get great cards for her just in the last week that this has been going on. I haven't gotten great cards for her as far as running. Hmm. She doesn't, she's, she's not getting, it's funny because she's not getting the cards that Biden is getting. Now, what's really interesting, Biden's actually getting good cards. I'm going to show them to you. But um, if for some reason, somewhere in the middle of that term, Joe Biden was like, you know, I, I got to step, I got to do them. You know, I got to step back. She would take over. She would do very well, and people would like her. Okay, well, that's what I'm saying. Yes. So yes. yes. <laughs> but but if she was running, she doesn't get good cards. If it's if it's given to her as okay, vice president, you're in. We, Biden's got to go. She right. would people would be like, hell yeah, they would they would actually be Team Kamala. Um, it's really interesting to see the cards shift though between running and just 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 kind of getting handed the presidency. It's two different you know two different sets of cards and they're they're vastly different so it's really interesting for trump and biden so here's trump okay so check it out here's donald trump showing up in the cards here about this whole biden situation and he you know he's got it he's like i got it in the bag here i am i mean that's the three of pentacles he's like i yep i nailed it i'm like you're saying i'm gonna win it's gonna be great the this energy sticks around for a while as far as the cards go it really does stick around for quite a while the hangman is sitting here 
um, I find it, 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 the card to me feels very heavy. So to me, it's kind of like, all right, we're kind of sitting in this energy for a minute of will he, won't he, will he, won't he. Um, I'm going to put cards. Biden is here in his own cards. I'm going to put cards down. He's got nice cards. Honestly, I feel like he moves on from this and everybody's like, oh, never mind. Like it's, it's it almost feels strange that, oh, it's this thing. It's this thing. It's this thing. And then it's like turns on a dime. Oh, wait, never mind. He's fine. I mean, it, it, it feels very odd to me. Um, I don't think he's going to step down and I don't think he should, quite frankly. Uh, and, and, you know, if, if, I know a lot of people are pushing Gavin Newsom right now, which is just odd to me. I it is. It is. It is. Although uh, when I look at his chart, it's perfect for getting elected. It's too perfect. There's not enough pressure, which makes me think that he's not going to get that chance, you know, to be in the mm -hmm. midst. Because usually you see in people's charts, you'll see something really nice and things that are not so nice, because that's what tends to correlate with all the insults and all the crazy energy of being in a campaign, right? But he, I think that uh, Gavin Newsom is going to be a major asset as we go into the fall, mm -hmm. because his his uh, his chart looks really good right now. And that usually means a person can be a great spokesperson. Same with Obama too. Obama has Aquarius rising mm -hmm. with Jupiter being in trying to that. Uh, it, the, you know, it increases the chances that he becomes really expressive and, and makes the case really well for uh, for the uh, Democratic ticket. But yeah, no, Gavin Newsom, uh, I, I would find that really, really strange. You know? Yeah, they, a lot of people are throwing his name around uh, right now, which I just, you know, I, I, I no, hardcore no. Biden has good cards. I'm telling you, the guy's got really good cards. He's, his car, I think this just passes over. I think it just sort of fades away. He's got very nice cards here. Uh, I mean, you can count on Trump to just continue to bring it up and bring it up and bring it up and bring it up right up until November. I mean, he, that's, you know, he's found the thing that he can, he can push. So he's going to push it. And that's actually here in the cards. He's just going to keep going. No, no, I know 34 felony counts, but forget that because that guy's old. Um, we're going to continue to see it. We're going to continue to see it. But Biden actually, you know, after they, they attacked him, everybody was attacking and I never donate to political candidates anymore. I got, I got, well, I don't have the money to do it now, but with Trump, I was just donating left and right to any Democrat I could, you know, and I, I got burnt out on it. I got financially burnt out on it, but I actually gave Biden money. I was like, you know what, Joe, here, have some, I mean, it was like five bucks, but I was like, you know, here, take it. I, he raised quite a bit of money after, you know, everybody mm -hmm. was starting to say, go down, you know, get out of here. You're too old. He's got, he's got people behind him. This is, these are very nice cards. This is showing, you know, I mean, not Pelosi, obviously not Nancy Pelosi. Don't get me started on her, but uh, I've never <laughs> well, been a fan of Pelosi's. She's um, hedging. I think she's hedging because, yeah. you know, I mean, they, you have to remember that she was the House leader. And so probably the House members have been trying to talk to her. And then, I mean, these people have a tough life because they look at numbers, they see trends. And, you know, you've got to, sometimes you got to hang in there. Sometimes you got to pull the plug. That's what makes it hard. You know, yeah. we're looking at it's it from true. the outside. You know? This so. is very true. He's got a lot of people behind him. He's got a lot of people wanting to support him. And he's got money. There is money here for Joe Biden. So I, I, I don't think he's going to drop out. And I don't think, and I don't think, you know, I do believe he will be, he'll be, I can't, talk, I cannot talk today, Andre. It's ridiculous. I do believe he will be reelected. Um, and I don't think, I mean, the cards are always weird around the election. And I know, um, I think you said the astrology, I think we talked about it before. You said the astrology was okay and it was really in Biden's favor. For the election? Yeah. Yeah, well, the election, yeah. I mean, the thing, the, the incredible irony to all this is that I've already seen this pattern in his chart there was this energy building from the spring of 23 into the spring of 24, that whole year, the Saturn was roaming around a different point in his chart, his other angle, the ascendant, right? So then all the talk started about this guy is too old, blah, blah, blah. Then Saturn pulls away right around the state of the union because it's away from that area, right? But then it came back in June. That was the mistake I made that I was seeing, looking at him and thinking, wow, why is he doing that statue thing? He looked really 
quite diminished. And uh, but that's what Saturn can do. You know, even a person that mm -hmm. is perfectly healthy, you go through a Saturn period, and you just feel like you're more hemmed in and you're weirdly restricted. So for him, June and July, and especially mid June to mid July, it's a really tricky period, right? But then it starts to pull away. And by the time you get to the election period, the Saturn is in a really good spot. It's making wow. a trine, it's not doing that anymore. So then it becomes, oh, this guy is so wise and this guy is so experienced. The other keywords for Saturn, right? Which right. is what we were hearing in the sort of in between the State of the Union and when this collapse happened, right? But it was a pretty, pretty substantial downturn that, so, you know, that's why there's a lot of, still a lot of talk, you know, there people are still saying, you know, we're really worried about this. And, but now there's today, there's a press conference today, later on. Now, that's an interesting thing because the Saturn is still there, but the lunar today is really good. The, the moon is in uh, late degrees of Virgo. Mm -hmm. That supports his Scorpio planets. So today he's got to do it. When he's doing this press conference, he has to take advantage, you know, and lift the clouds, you know, by answering. Because one of the things that is true, I mean, we have to admit these things. Otherwise, you're, you're hiding under a rock, is that Biden has not been all that good about putting himself out there. You know, he uh, less than as, as little as possible. He wants it to be more scripted. And this is what then leads people to believe, you know, that he's not totally there. So he's got to do have a good showing, you know, when he when he does the press conference today. That's critical, he, I think. Yeah, I think. Well, and I just it just irritates me because he has to now put all this effort into Hey, by the way, I'm not a walking zombie, you know, instead of the election, you know, instead of, uh, you know, this is now he is he has to shift away from running against Trump to basically proving to his own party and the American citizens. I'm not too old to do this. It's it's it's, it's a massive distraction. And I don't think people are taking that into account. Yeah, no, it's totally true. Yeah, I I. I... Uh, you know, between the fact that he has to do the job, which is a high tension job, you know, the NATO meeting and all that, and, and he has to campaign and he has to defend against the attacks. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. But then you, you know what this is like. You've been under Saturn. <laughs> you know what happens, right? It's not a lot of fun. <laughs> it's not a lot of fun. It's no, not. no. I mean, uh, uh, you can speak to it with total clarity because you, you got your, your astrology lesson in real time, basically. Like, in fact, I think even a little too much what it put you through. But, you know, then you also you recover and then you use that as a as a sense of knowledge about it and so forth. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and your life, I mean, compare it's important. Everybody's life is important. But if you're the president, you know, you think, oh, this is really important. So it magnifies, you know, the fact that all these people are watching you. And uh, I mean, he's now in this place where he if he's digging in his heels, he has to win. Or, I mean, it's, you know, and I said the other thing that he made that statement, he was asked in the post-debate, that question where they said, I think it was uh, Stephanopoulos said to him, well, uh, what happens if you lose? And he said, well, as long as I gave it my best. And people said, wait a minute, hold on, that's not enough. You know, you can't just say as long as the correct answer should have been, don't even talk like that, I'm going to win. Yeah, you know, like, right, I'm not going to lose, I'm not going to lose, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. But yeah, again, this is like all this stuff, you know, the fact that a person get the, gets themselves on the wrong side of something and seeing a planet like Saturn around. Yeah, that's that's what the thing is. You know. Now, do you in your cards, what do you get for his health overall? Like, you know, cause that's important, too. And yeah. um, that uh, there is this the other planetary energy that is circulating right now, really strong for all the, for Trump and Biden and the country is Uranus and Uranus has this quality of taking you into some unexpected place, some kind of shock, you know, and I have to admit in Trump's in Biden's chart, pardon me, it's in the health house, right? Mm -hmm. So that house is also the workhouse. So then you can sometimes totally dodge the health part and just have work stress. Well, that's pretty obvious. He's already right. in that. Right. But what you don't want is to actually get a health event or you know some such thing that would throw things into a dizzy right so this is sixth house sixth house yeah yeah sixth house it's opposition very... to the 12th wow okay so well so let me ask you this before i get into my cards 
could what's going on now with the whole, okay, I screwed up the debate and now people want me to quit. Could that also be Uranus messing with him? Because that's work, right? Um, yeah, it, it is. It is Uranus in the sense that uh, the, the part that Uranus is playing is that Uranus being in the sixth represents his support staff. And when the support, mm. like all these people in a way are the support staff, even though they are in a sense equal to him, they are following his lead. So when they turn on you like that, yes, that's also Uranus, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't change that much. I mean, going into the convention, that Uranus goes to station and it goes directly opposite. I mean, that has to be stated, right? That is yeah. Yeah. there. So then I'm thinking, wow, what can that convention be? <laughs> you know, yeah. Saturn opposite, or I mean, Uranus opposite on a full moon triggering it right as the convention is starting. Oh, that's going to be interesting. That's yeah. going to, and for me, you know, I, I, Biden, you know, when we read on Biden, you guys, I, because I am a Scorpio and a Scorpio rising, uh, and I have uh, Uranus and Scorpio, like, so when I hear things like this, I'm like, oh God, so it's me and, like, what are me and Joe going to go through? Like, I don't know, I, so I have been also dealing with the Uranus opposition for quite some time, and it's, it's a little bit of a bitch. Yeah, I mean, the, the one, the one uh, uh, for you that makes it easier is, the, the the thing is, it's late in the sign now. Like Uranus has been in Taurus since 2018, right? So it's now in the last couple of years at most, like by the spring of 26 goes to Gemini. Joe has all his planets really late. So mm -hmm. that Uranus is opposing, right, uh, from that spot, which for example, it wasn't doing that in 2020. It, it wasn't, it was so early in the sign, you know? So this is the problem that right now, this is where, um, uh, Western astrology uses the angles with more precision and uh, often in Vedic they'll say well Uranus is opposing this, the whole sign I know but there are points where it's opposing it more exactly points where it's opposing it less right yeah yeah exactly and, and I you know not an astrologer although um I can follow <laughs> I can follow a lot <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if I will ever my life will ever calm down enough for me to actually study astrology maybe when I'm older but not now. yeah but you know a lot more now than when I first talked with you I, uh, you, you 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 know you remember your own patterns and yeah so I mean that that's what it's all it is is anything you have to learn it you have to you, yeah you know, touch with it right you know it's a, it's a life it's really a lifelong study okay Biden's health cards actually they're stunning Biden's health cards are stunning um he's he's Health wise, I know they, they 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 were saying there was an article. Oh, the Parkinson's guy came out and he was tested for Parkinson's and da 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 da. And I don't know, you know, I don't know where that came from. I don't know if it was just BS or if it was legit. I have no idea. Um, but look, beautiful cards. So he has vital. This you know, this is how old is he? Eighty. Eighty one. Eighty one. He's yeah. there, he's got a lot of vitality. This guy, and that is here. Um, he's not only that, but the health card is showing as really lovely. So then not only that, we got more. Look at this. Beautiful. Ten of Cups card, of the happy family. Nine of Cups, the wish card. This, he's balanced. He's got really nice health here. Knight of Cups is also here. So his health cards are fabulous. Now, there's one little issue. Yeah, just one. Um, he does have the Five of Pentacles coming in. Now, the way this reads to me, so going off the cards and looking at it psychically, the way that it reads to me is this is a minor, this is not a major health issue. It's a minor health issue. It may be a chronic minor health issue. So this is not Parkinson's. It's not, you know, dementia. It's not cancer. It's not, it's not something that is so major and disastrous, you know, there's minor health. I mean, the man's 81 years old. He's going to have problems. The prostate's probably, you know, shot to hell at that age. Like, you know, there will be chronic issues here. I don't see anything major for him. I do not. And I honestly, I think he might I know a lot of people are saying he wouldn't finish the term he won't finish the term I think it's a pretty good shot he's actually going to finish the term if he if he dips out if he leaves and gives Kamala the, the the hat so to speak it would be later in the term and she wouldn't be there for super duper long like year and a half at most hmm. well yeah I mean I, 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 the way I see this from the vantage point of wanting to make sure that uh, Democrat Biden is elected, you know, because of the danger of Trump. So to me, I, I could care less how he gets in there. You know, yeah, as long same. as he gets in there, 
and if he stays, he leaves. You know, because then, I mean, if you look too far ahead and you start talking about 2028, you, you're never going to have peace around thinking, well, you know, what could we do? You got to think of the next election, mm -hmm. uh, which is the one coming up and get in there any way you can. <laughs> 100%. I, I agree with you completely. I, I think the media is downplaying the threat of Trump. They always have, you know, they've always mm -hmm. downplayed that guy. And even now the, the the fact that you know something like the new york times was putting up you know two articles every day on how old biden was but they had yet to say hey by the way the other guy's a felon you know uh it's it's insane to me it's insane yeah. i think yeah. a lot of people don't even people that watch us which are typically you know democrats blue people right um i don't think they really understand the the really severe issues we would have if Trump got back into office. Oh, of course, of course. You know, it's it's a uh, it's uh, yeah catastrophic because yeah. you know because he's su he's such an immoral scoundrel. You know, I mean, if 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 you had a, I mean, almost anyone, even but you know, when you when you start saying that Dick Cheney is looking better, that, that's pretty scary because we used to think Cheney's like Darth Vader. Yeah. All of a sudden, you know, at least you know with Cheney. He does pull for the U.S. He may not pull for the U.S. the way you like him to pull for the U.S., but that's pretty clear. This SOB, you know, this POS, is friendly with all the dictators and he would help Putin out. Oh, yeah. This to me is mind-boggling, you know, that there's a person like this and that the Republican Party backs, you know, this kind of thing, which goes against their own principles and is extremely dangerous because, you know, uh, you're, you're choosing fascism literally or yes. dictatorships over yes. democracies right yes 100 100 percent. i i think joe well let me put the cards i'm gonna put the cards out i think joe is perfectly up to the job i really do i think he can do it you know he might he might be a little bit slower than the average bear so to speak but i think he's totally up to doing the job and in fact i think joe biden's second term and I, I don't know what you have as far as the astrology goes for him second term wise, but it looks gorgeous to me. Like this, this is his, I don't care. I'm going to do whatever I want. Let's forgive all the student loan. You know what I mean? Like he, I see him implementing so much, so many really beautiful, good things. Like it, the second term goes way farther than the first term. It just looks stunning to me. Hmm. It looks stunning to me. Yeah, he's up to the job. He's got really nice cards here. Biden's got, I mean, honestly, Biden has very, very, I don't see any problems with his cards. The man is up to the job. Look at this. It's literally saying, I can do the job. There's the job. And here's him doing a great, like, he's up to it. He can do it. Now, what's really interesting, yeah. Trump is also here. <laughs> and this is not, this is a delusional man. You know, he, he doesn't know what the job is. He doesn't, I mean, we already know this. He doesn't know what it is. He doesn't know how to do it. God only knows what he he would think the job was. So he, he's showing up in the cards as, you know, just just off his rocker. Whereas Biden is going, yep, I got it. He's very steady. This is a steady guy. Let him just let him do his job. Maybe he's not good at debates. Maybe he's not good at talking. We know he's not great at, at public speaking. We know he's not. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean he can't do the job. No, absolutely. I mean, th this whole thing <laughs> is based so much on the the perception, you know, the optics, the way a person looks and the way they, they communicate. I mean, it is true that it's totally true that having a communicator is really powerful, right? Like if you if if I, you put uh, Pete Buttigieg's way of communicating on, in Biden's head right now with all the information they have on Trump and so forth, you could really carry the message in a much better way. That's the part that has really you know, declined in, in Biden in these recent years. And I, I think he already wasn't great in 2020, but he oh. is even more, he's more tired now. And, and he, this thing where he drifts and so forth, it's a little more, it happens more frequently. So that's why people get alarmed. But as far as what he's done, no, I mean, uh, pfft, no, absolutely. Including that, you know, things like Kevin McCarthy's tried to lie about it, even though, you know, saying, oh, he's got a mental problem. Where before when he was the house speaker, he was quoted as saying, you yeah, know, I met with Biden and, you know, like he, he as much as said he outsmarted me. He just knew more about what was going on and he ate my lunch type thing. Right. Yeah. And so 
uh, and Biden has done that for NATO. You know, he's totally there as far as that. No question about that. But the thing is, you know, especially modern society is really optic. You know, you see it on camera and you, just, you, you panic, right? That's yeah. so, he, so I didn't watch the debate, so I guess he didn't look so hot. Huh. Uh, no, he didn't. I mean, uh, the debate was was quite painful because he was his energy was really low, you know, mm -hmm. really low. And he couldn't track what Trump was saying when he would speak. He would speak in a very faint voice. Mm -hmm. His he was uh, sounding a bit incoherent at times. He left. He left. Uh, you know, unbelievable things that Trump said. He didn't challenge immediately. Mm -hmm. Like Trump said things like, "Well, Putin had a dream of invading Ukraine." Really? Oh, <laughs> Tell me about that. Tell me about that. I mean, what the hell? I mean, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe the the things that Trump. Or Trump also said. Democrats murder babies. I mean, I have to say, well, are you mentally ill? What do you mean Democrats murder babies? You just make up stuff, right? You just show up here and talk nonsense. Uh, there were a number of things that he, I brought up uh, that they were like, you know, almost like how they say the ball is over the plate, hit a home run. Right. But Joe right. was not was not up to the task, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on that night. But, you know, the uh, question is, do you judge him just on that? Of course not. But you also have to understand why there's a big firestorm right now. You know, yeah. It's not just a single person. It's it's made people really concerned. Yeah. Know? Well, and I think, again, I think mainstream media just took it and ran. I, I don't get me started. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I know. Well, that, it is true that mainstream media, they depend on controversy. They depend on, uh, yeah, creating fires. Or, or even even if you said, okay, well, maybe they didn't create the fire. Well, they certainly stoke it, right? Once the fire is there, they're in there. I mean, in fact, you see the reporters, a lot of these reporters, following the Congress people around. What do you have to say about Biden? And they, they're saying, no comment, no comment, because they don't want to talk about it. But reporters, that's their job. They want to make noise. You know, yeah. to, noise and news are so yeah. close together. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I find it interesting. You know, a lot of people, I have, I have a, maybe a hard question. I don't know, but a lot of people are saying that it's, it is the, it is the new version of, you know, Hillary's emails, that it's, that his age is irrelevant. They're trying to make it relevant. And, you know, that's, you know, her emails, the whole thing, that's what derailed her campaign. And they're, you know, they're attempting to derail his campaign with this kind of, you know, oh, but his age. Yeah. Well, and the, the only counterpoint to that, the only thing that, Again, it's whether you think it's true or not, and you will get people arguing this point. My sense is that when you're doing polling, the averages of polls tend to be pretty close to what's happening. So if you take a single poll, no, but if you see lots and lots of polls, and it is true that Biden's polls have not been very good. Like back in 2020, you, if you don't believe the polls now, then you don't believe them then. So back in 2020, he was ahead by quite a bit the whole time and then he won so you know now he's not so then people think wow well that's maybe a little scary right that's what's happening if trump if biden were still ahead i don't think you'd be getting all this noise but then there are the people who will say don't believe the polls at all okay well sure i mean that's a it's a case to be made um could be a dangerous case maybe not that's up to each person i guess to decide how much they believe them yeah. Let me ask you this, as, and, and and correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't, you know, um, every generation has Pluto, right? It's like Pluto's in whatever, and that sort of defines the generation. Yeah, it's not the only thing that does, but yeah, it's a good it's a good marker. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of Gen Zs are Gen Z is great, <laughs> but uh, so it's kind of what I'm seeing online is a lot of Gen Z's are going, I don't like what he's done with Gaza and Israel. So I'm just not going to vote for Joe Biden. Where is Pluto for Gen Z? I don't know. I haven't looked it up. I'm... Is Gen Z in, um, in the seventies? Gen Z is ooh, 2000. I think it's, oh, it's later. One to 2000. Yeah. It's like 2001 is when it, when it starts. Okay. Well, that's, that's Sagittarius. Pluto's in Sagittarius till 2008. So between 95 and 2008, it's a Sagittarius uh, yeah, Pluto. Crazy. So, you know, on that, like that's not uh, necessarily bad the way it aligns with Biden. So, you know, and the thing is, see, this is the point is that 
is that he himself has not been quoted as an example in making the message more forcefully around saying, which maybe he will, maybe he'll still do that. Maybe the Democratic Party will make the obvious message, which is, okay, so you don't like what I'm doing in Gaza. Have you heard what the other guy says about what he will do in Gaza? So like, you know, politics is the art. I keep saying this to people, the art of choosing the least bad option. You're never going to be happy. The person you choose will do some of what you want and not all of what you want. The other guy will screw you. Be really careful. If you choose the other guy, you get nothing. You get set back, right? So if you're a Gen Z and you say, this is horrible about guys, I'm not going to vote. Okay, but you get the other, the other guy said Israel should finish the job. Yeah. What does that mean, right? No, Biden is trying to play. He knows half the country is for it. Half the country is against it. He's caught. He's in the middle. Yeah. He's doing the best he can. He's trying to call out Netanyahu, you know, and so forth. But people that way can be, you know, uh, uh, really stupid, in my opinion. They, you know, total numbskull yeah. behavior when you don't realize how clear it is that the the uh, Biden and his team, there, or I mean, uh, Trump. Trump is totally in line with Palestinians. You know, I could care less, and that's yeah. disturbing. You know. Well, he called Biden a Palestinian. I don't even know what that meant. Why would you like? What are you even saying, Trump? No, well, you know, he, he thrives on hyperbole. Yeah. That's that he's got a very excessive Jupiter, mm -hmm. which in some ways has helped him a lot, but it's also the cause of his problems as well because he says crazy things and he does crazy things that are based on confidence that is not well grounded, right? It's and then he gets not, in trouble. Yeah. yeah like fun. like for example, back in he he literally walked himself into the first impeachment on a Jupiter Jupiter was on his moon and he got this feeling, well, you know, uh, Mueller couldn't touch me. I'll call Zelensky and I'm going to tell him that he has to help me out. And Zelensky, you know, then the guy heard it. He's being impeached and so on. Right. So uh, that's the way the way he is. Uh, and it, it's, it's an example of how a planet that is really good can also be a problem for you. Right. With if you, if yeah. you misuse it. So 100%. Yeah. have you ever done a sinistry chart on Trump and Biden? Sinistry, Trump, and, oh yeah, no, that, of course. Like, so there, to give you an example, the sinistry of those two would be that you kind of wonder, well, he beat him in 2020, right? So is there something that would say that? Uh, uh, Biden's Jupiter is over, is conjunct uh, Trump's Saturn-Venus conjunction, right? Oh. So that suggests that Biden is stronger in that, to me, it has a quality of dominating the other person. Like uh, the uh, Biden's Jupiter is better, right? But you know, now we're in a new cycle, and it's totally normal to be nervous. I mean, the stakes are huge, right? The stakes in this election aren't just for here; they're for everywhere. Because in Europe, they're wondering, "Oh my lord, if this guy gets back in, what do we do?" You know, because he's going to try to he tries to destabilize the whole thing. You know, um, he doesn't agree with the idea that. Uh, Russia should be pushed back. You know? Right, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's a huge, a very, very huge problem for Europe. If, if Ukraine falls, everybody's in trouble. We're all in trouble. Yeah, of course, of course. But but basically, for for Ukraine to succeed, they need Western action, which apparently now even the European Union is trying to do that, even if the U.S. cuts out. But mm -hmm. The U.S. is a big, big military dog. So if the U.S. is on your side, Russia has a huge problem because, you know, Russia back in in the 19, late 1980s, they ran out of money. Like they're not yes. big enough. Right. So they had to quit. Now, the thing is, speaking of that, there's a big planetary conjunction coming up next year and the year after because it happens in a couple of phases. Saturn, Neptune, which if you look back, it always connects with major change in Russia. Right. Uh, going back to the revolution in 1917. Mm -hmm. And the placement of that conjunction is not good for Putin. So that's why I've been saying that I think it's going south for them. And I, I've even used that to surmise that Democrats are going to win, because if Democrats were going to lose, then Russia would get more assistance, right? It's kind of a projection you can make. Mm -hmm. And to me, it fits better that that it they would run into problems and have to scale back. As Where a result does the conjunction of, take place, Gemini? No, it takes place in Aries, a little bit 
in the middle of 25, then it backtracks and there's another point in 26. So you, you kind of read it as those two years mm -hmm. of the conjunction. But this is where people get really impatient and they'll say, well, you've been saying Putin and yeah, Putin, sure. But now more money's come in. I mean, at most he's got a stalemate. Then whether you believe it or not, he's running out of soldiers. He has to uh, constantly bring new people into battle. Later, the mothers are the ones that become really irate. That's what happened when they were in Afghanistan. They spent a number of years there. And when the mother started to realize, oh, my, my son is not coming back, yes. then they got mad and Russia was forced to pull back and there was this big change. Actually, in that war, bankrupted Russia, right, back in the 80s. And this one threatens to do the same thing. And part of the reason is you've got all these countries, US and the European Union, throwing money at it. You know, that doesn't help. I mean, Russia, for Russia, I mean, Russia is the size of Italy as far as the, the, the you know, uh, I believe California all by itself, I think, has more GDP than Russia. I'm not sure if that's true, but I know I Italy. I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. So, you know, it's a country that tries to be, they, they want to be an empire without having the resources to be an empire, you know. So uh, fighting a war and you get opposed by a large bloc is problematic. Let's just say that, you know. Very, very, yeah. 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 Interesting. I have one question for you. This is like totally off topic, but I'm curious if you have, if you've done anything with it. Have you looked at Keir Starmer's chart um, in the UK? I have not, not yet. Um, I will do that. Uh, but I'll say that that to me is an example of what happened there, right? It's an example along with what happened in France mm -hmm. that to me, it shows that the energy of the whole planet, planet Earth, is moving in the direction of more power to more people, not less, because of Pluto going into Aquarius. The way the planets are shifting, Pluto especially, signals that. So I would be really alarmed, you know, right now if this conservatives had won and then in France, Marie Le Pen, you know, that's not what happened. So we got to take some wins, kind of like the guy yesterday, you know, the person that was on my channel, he said, look, elections tell you the story and the Democratic Party is 13 for 13 since Dobbs, right? So yeah. Biden and Kamala, you can say whatever you like about his age. The key to me is Kamala has to sell, you know, talk about, use whatever word you like, the women's issue, because it's really serious. Yeah. And so, and by the way, I, I'll be totally blunt about this. Women are either have to save the Republic. This is all in the <laughs> hands of women. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Yeah. They're the greater percentage of the electorate. I cannot understand why a single woman would vote for these, these people, you know, who are taking away rights. There's no way you should be doing that. That's the key topic that overcomes everything, you know, if you yeah. play it right. Yeah. And so that to me inspires confidence. Rather than, I, yeah. I, I agree 100%. And I think that is also why, I don't know if you followed this trad wife trend. Have you followed this at all? So traditional wife trend. It's a, it's a big thing on TikTok. And it's, you know, these women, I don't, you know, I don't work. I stay at home with my kids. I serve my husband. I cook, I clean, I do whatever he wants. I have sex with him whenever he wants. Yeah, I mean, and so they really, really push it. Uh, you should make your own money. You should only have your husband's money. It's really being pushed on a lot of social media platforms. I find it very interesting that all of a sudden, you know, after years and years and years of like, you know, we want equality, we want this, we want that. You have this pushback of these women going, oh no, you know, you should dress modestly. And, you know, that's out the window with me, but you know, you should, you should, you know, sit with the kids and have as many kids as you can and serve your husband and that's it. And it's a huge trend. So, um, I think it's becoming a trend and I think certain people are pushing it because of exactly what you said, because women really do need to save the Republic. I mean, I, I, it's, it's a very, bizarre. yeah, well, and I think, I don't know, we'll see time always tells, but I think that ship has sailed. Good luck with that. You know, you can say that you can try to promote it. You know, this is where TikTok, why there is a threat of being banned. That starts to sound like China's behind it, you know, because China owns that platform. And so it's in their interest even for their own country, because now their country's having problems because they had that one child policy. Yes. And now women don't want to reproduce. And so they have a big problem because they don't, they don't have, have much immigration, right? So that country has their own problems, right? But in the US, you see that and you think, well, that's pretty interesting that it's coming out of TikTok. But will it gain traction? I doubt it. I mean, honestly, this is the thing about 
when the that planet that shook Pluto out of the order, when Eris was discovered, mm-hmm. that really uh, drives the power of women upward. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in fact, one of the interesting things that I notice is Kamala has her um, moon position right around where the um, Eris is transiting now. So she's the major representative of women's issues, like the idea of women as a warrioress, you know, uh, so it's great that it, re- it gets reflected that way. But I would be, I would be completely amazed if you know the, this kind of like eighteenth century view of the world. This is what Alito wants, by the way. Alito, yeah. Alito is totally, uh, you know, pro the white male, you know, uh, basically nationalist supremacist running things, and women just keep their place and and obey. Well, good luck, in my opinion. Good luck with that, you know. Yeah. Because yeah, 100%. yeah, it's a it's a loser, and uh, whether you get there sooner or a bit later doesn't matter. That's where the world is going. You know? Oh, I so, agree completely. Yeah. I agree, and I think that's why this is a trend because people are trying to push back on it. No, no, don't go. You know, come back over here. It's you know, it's better over here. Wear your long prairie dress and have seventeen children. Like they're really. I mean, it just sounds awful. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what a woman would want that, but yeah, no, um, yeah, and you know, and, and they're doing this by the way, the Project Twenty Twenty Five and all that stuff, and the way the Republicans are talking, they're trying to reduce women's rights, and they think that you know, okay, we'll cut off contraception, we'll cut off abortion, and this will cause women what to have more babies? Are you crazy? They're going to tell you, and I'm going to have no babies. You're right. insane. Right. In the modern era, don't deal with people like that because people are way too awake. They Read the news. We're not in 1900 where you can no, tell them a no, story, no, right? Exactly, but exactly. I mean, they'll try. They'll try because in the end, they're knuckleheads. But you yeah, know. well, that's why they want no fault divorce because they think if there's if they get rid of no fault divorce, then women will have to stay married. Like you know, I mean, it's right, right, scary. exactly, exactly. But it's a question of whether they can do it. I say no, but the threat is there and it scares people. Understandably, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's a credible threat. I don't think they can do it, but I do think it's a credible threat. I yeah, mean, of course. They would of course. do it. They would. This is, it's not empty. Right. Yeah. Right. Totally. Exactly. Totally. Well, I think that's our time, my friends. So. All right. Well, it was a pleasure as always, and uh, I'm sure we'll get to talk again sometime in the summer because I, I I'm betting, 100 percent that there will be things to talk about. <laughs> I know it's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. Yeah. Well, thank you very very much, and I will see you. All right. Bye, everyone.